Good morning, guys. Thanks so much for joining us for our webinar on leveraging tourism organisations. My name is Christy Bailey. And if you've been to any of the webinars so far, you will have heard me speak and engage with me on some level. Um, I own and manage uh, a tourism business as well as a marketing business. So what we're going to go through today is all based on what I sort of do regularly um, and how I've engaged with tourism organisations in the past. Um, there's varying levels that you might be engaged in different organisations with, so um, some of it might be relevant, some might be new information to you, and hopefully there is a little bit you can take from it. Um, now, we're presenting this on behalf of Australia's Southwest Tourism in conjunction with the ASFAS program, um, as delivered by the federal government. So I'm joined today by Malcolm Farrell-Mitchell, who's a Strategic Marketing and Business Development Manager from Australia's Southwest, who you may know. So he's just going to say a couple of words now um, and to welcome you to the webinar. So go ahead, Malcolm. Hi, everybody. Um, as uh, Christy said, my name is Malcolm. I work at Australia's Southwest. Um, I may not have had the pleasure of meeting all of you yet, um, but please feel free to reach out to me. I was really delighted to be working with Christy um, and as Baz on these on these workshops because they they show you exactly you know why you would be working with an organization like ours so this this seminar is act, absolutely about why you would connect with Australia Southwest hopefully you find that valuable um, and if you'd like more information specifically about membership with our organization and how you can leverage um, working with us I would really you know you feel free to reach out to me um, I'll put my email address in the chat um, but yeah, thanks so much to Christy. These have been so great so far. So um, I'll, I'll send you back to her, but yeah, feel free to reach out at any point in time. Thanks so much, Malcolm. All right, so today is designed to be interactive. You've got the chat or the Q&A functionality that you can use. So please hop on and ask me questions at any time. Um, otherwise, as Malcolm said, make contact with ASW after today's session and they will be able to give you um, as much information as you require. So what we're actually going to get into today, first of all, we're going to discover a range of different tourism organisations, many of which I believe you will have come across or will be aware of. Um, we're going to discuss what their role is in tourism and how you can really most effectively work with them. We'll do a bit of a deep dive into making the most of those partnerships um, with each organisation um, to grow your visitation and to encourage collaboration with, um, with these organisations and potentially with other businesses. So as I mentioned, you might already be working with a lot of these organisations, but there may be ways that you can work with them more and just really grow that, um, that collaboration. So tourism is a really complex industry. Um, it involves a really broad range of businesses and organisations plus government agencies, and they all work together at different levels. Um, and basically they're, they're working together at these different levels to deliver a complete tourism package. So each person in the chain really contributes to the overall holiday experience of the consumer on some level. And that could be from their initial destination marketing that they, they see in their own country or in their own, uh, in their own uh, forms of media domestically, um, right through to that ground level experience that they'll have when they're visiting you and experiencing your product or service. So each state and territory within Australia has its own government tourism agency that works to promote Australia as a tourism destination internationally, as well as obviously their own state. Um, within each state and territory, there's several other organisations from regional tourism organisations to visitor centres and a range of um, other things in between. Um, and they work with local tourism, uh, the local tourism industry, potentially local government, plus the state organisations to develop and market tourism in their specific areas. So why you should work with the tourism industry and with all organisations is basically, well, first of all, you have to understand how your business fits into the broader tourism industry and then actively become a part of the chain. Um, that will then help you to expand your marketing reach and potentially attract new customers uh, to connect with other tourism industry businesses and organisations You'll obviously gain really valuable insights into the current state and future trends of the tourism industry. And that can be really helpful for you in developing your product or in, um, you know, it just in growing your reach, essentially. Um, obviously, it will allow you to open new income streams, which is what we want. And you can uh, participate in educational and professional development programs to make sure that your experience, your knowledge, your understanding is continually growing and it's relevant to what's happening within the industry. 
So firstly, we're going to have a look at the way WA and then in, in particular your region is marketed or promoted within the tourism industry. So we have a national tourism organisation or an NTO, which is Tourism Australia. Now, this is the government agency that's responsible for attracting international visitors to Australia predominantly for both leisure and business events. Um, its mission is to make Australia essentially the most desirable destination on earth so that international visitors do come to Australia. What we've seen lately, and I'll talk about this more shortly, is that whilst people can't travel internationally, Tourism Australia's focus for the very first time has uh, diverted to domestic tourism. So I'll talk about that in a, in a minute. Um, then you've got our state tourism organisation or our STO, which is Tourism Western Australia. Now they support the activity that's undertaken by Tourism Australia to raise the awareness of our destination and to drive visitation into and around Western Australia specifically. Now that's achieved by showcasing key experiences or uh, main hooks uh, or innovative marketing activity plus hosting world-class events all to get that attention for obviously Australia predominantly and then Western Australia specifically through the STO. Then you've got your RTO, your regional tourism organisation. Now RTOs capitalise on Tourism WA's hooks by delivering region focused campaigns. Now they could be mostly in interstate campaigns so, or interstate. They support Tourism WA's interstate and international marketing as well and really encourage that visitor dispersal. So Tourism WA's job is to get them to WA and then the RTO's job is to get them out to your region. Obviously your RTO, which you're more than uh, well aware of, is Australia's South Coast Tourism and they're really the conduit between Tourism WA and yourselves and the local industry. From there, you might have local stakeholders. So this could be local government authorities. It could be local tourism organisations. Now, some destinations don't have an LTO, whereas others do. Um, so it might may be relevant to you or maybe not. Um, you most likely have a regional development commission in your area, a chamber of commerce. Um, and there could be other key bodies that help to align that sub-region and enhance the visitor experience in that destination. They're also there in some cases to assist with the development of product, um, capacity building perhaps, and they generally work collaborative, collaboratively, sorry, with your RTO, so with Australia Southwest Tourism to market the destination as well. Whilst they might not have marketing dollars that they put towards marketing, they may support in other ways. So from there, you've got tourism operators such as yourself and visitor centres. Now they, the, the role of, of you guys and business centres is to really deliver that extraordinary customer experience to interstate, interstate and international visitors. Tourism operators and visitor centres also work collaborative, collaboratively with partners um, like your um, LTOs, your regional tourism organisations, your state tourism organisation to promote your individual products and those individual destinations. So that's a very broad overview of sort of a who's who and how it works and who's responsible at what level. Um, now we're going to go into some of these key tourism organisations in a lot more depth um, and we'll talk about how you can most effectively work with them, starting with Tourism Australia. So Tourism Australia is a federal government agency that promotes Australia as a tourism destination internationally and most recently we've seen them promote tourism domestically, uh, which is not normally done. So they also undertake research and forecasts for the tourism industry as well so that you're provided with the up-to-date industry information. The role of Tourism Australia is really that they're there to influence people to travel to and then to travel throughout Australia, which will increase the economic benefits to Australia from tourism and to help foster that sustainable tourism in Australia. Um, so what they can do for you is supply the latest industry statistics that will keep you informed of marketing activities that they've got going on. Um, they'll tell you how you can leverage off those marketing activities. And they'll also keep you informed of any industry news and updates. So there's no membership fee for Tourism Australia. They're there as an overarching body um, and they're there to support the state tourism organisation. But in saying that, there are many ways that you can get involved with Tourism Australia. So 
Because they operate on a national level, they aim to provide that overall message under which consumers view Australia. So the best way for you to get involved with their campaigns is really by echoing the same message that they're communicating. So singing the same song, essentially. Um, that way, when consumers view your marketing, they'll connect the dots with a wider piece that they've seen um, Tourism Australia present in the marketplace. So they'll directly align you with that um, overall impression, feeling and thoughts that they have about Australia. So in terms of getting involved, firstly, you have to make sure that you're listed on australia.com. Now you do this via your Australian Tourism Data Warehouse listing. If you're not already listed on ATDW, you absolutely need to be. Now this is a, a data warehouse of over, I think it's something like 35,000 products um, that you, so you load your information in this, uh, in this particular listing, and that will have your overarching business information. It'll have your specific tour and product information or product information. It'll give a rate guides. It'll link back to your website. You'll have the opportunity to upload images, videos, and a range of other information, um, that then feeds out to over 130 different websites. Now, australia.com is one of those. The other really important one is westernaustralia.com. Both of those websites feed directly from ATDW. The really important thing to note, and I'll talk about accreditation soon, but to be featured and listed on the westernaustralia.com website, you do have to be an accredited tourism business. So keep that in mind. So firstly, um, the best way to get involved with Australia.com or the most important is to be listed on that Australia.com website. Now, a lot of the marketing activity or all of the marketing activity that Tourism Australia do will go to their website. So if you're not there, this message that they're, they're pitching globally um, may, will obviously get back to their landing pages into their website and you won't be there. So you might miss out. Um, next, you can get on board with their campaigns. So at the moment, they have a holiday here this year campaign. That's with, with Hamish Blake, who you may be aware of, and his wife, essentially traveling around Australia, doing amazing things domestically. So this campaign is domestic focus. It encourage, encourages Australians to start booking and planning their domestic holiday. Now, this, there's a strong focus on booking experiences to help fill the void that's been left by international travellers. This is not a space that Tourism Australia would normally be in, obviously with COVID and with borders being closed. They have diverted their attention and funds to this holiday here this year campaign. Um, they do have an industry toolkit uh, that you can download from the Tourism Australia website that gives you information um, on the campaign. It gives you access to the campaign logo and other really useful tools that you can use within your own marketing activity. Basically, you can post your um, on your business social media channels uh, information about the Holiday Here year, This Year campaign. You can use their hashtag, which is Holiday Here This Year. Um, they do also have GIF stickers that you can use on your posts. So that you, you, you're getting that holiday here this year branding out to the marketplace. Now, that's a specific campaign that they're doing, obviously, domestically. And like I said, it's not a space that they would normally get in. Um, but given what's happening in the world, it is obviously very relevant. Outside of that campaign, um, you can certainly connect with them via social media. And I would highly encourage you to do so anytime you post. Now, if you imagine the social media team for Tourism Australia, they're sitting in a head office um, on the East Coast. They're not out there experiencing all these amazing things that you see on their social media channels. So they're really heavily relying on operators like yourselves to be posting on their channels um, and to be um, to tag them in so that they have then got a mechanism to find amazing content that they can repost. There's huge benefits, and I'll show you some examples shortly, but if they do repost your content, there are some fantastic benefits in terms of reach and exposure that you'll get from that. Now, they do have a webinar or a series of webinars on best practice for social media, and that's to really help your own social media efforts. So I'd really encourage you to get on to the um, Tourism Australia website and have a look at those webinars. Now, whenever you're posting, use the hashtag See Australia, which is on your screen. And that's on all of your social media content. Tag at Australia in on Facebook. Um, and that's for your chance to be, or, or Instagram, I should say. Um, and that's for your chance to be featured. So um, that, that's where you get some huge coverage. 
Um, in terms of PR, you can get amazing PR coverage by sending your media releases to their international media uh, team. And I've got the, the email address up on your screen. Um, they will also come to you from time to time and potentially through either Tourism WA or Australia Southwest Tourism with media or trade for meals um, that they're hosting. So it could be a Tourism Australia for meal. They'll go through to someone like Malcolm at Australia Southwest Tourism and then Malcolm will reach out to individual operators or Tourism Australia in some cases do come to you directly. So definitely get that PR coverage by being open to hosting media sorry, or trade for meals. Now, you can also participate in their Aussie specialist program. There's a lot more info on that that I'm going to go through shortly because it is a re really good opportunity, but it's, um, there's a lot to it. So I'm just going to show you some social media examples first. Now, these examples will show you um, what kind of coverage you can get. So first of all, look down the bottom of each post at the number of likes, the number of comments, and the number of shares. So comments and shares are absolute gold when it comes to social media. Um, you can see in these examples that Tourism Australia has not only tagged in specific tour operators, but they've also tagged in RTOs, whether that's Destination Perth, Australia's Northwest Tourism or Australia's Southwest Tourism in these three examples. Um, and they've um, obviously shared those images. So like I said, they're not out there getting those images themselves. They're scouring those hashtags and when you've tagged them in to provide, to get this amazing content. So have a look at those examples um, and then look at the exposure. Two of those posts got uh, 13,000 likes, um, 300 to 700 comments and thousands and thousands of shares. So follow the, their social media pages so that you can see what kind of content they like to post and therefore you can start generating content or, or getting your own content that's sort of in line with what um, their audience might like as well. So some great examples there where you could um, your product or service can be featured. Now, the Aussie Specialist Program I touched on, but to go into more detail on that, Tourism Australia engages with uh, about 35,000 um, Aussie Specialist agents through this Aussie Specialist Program. Now, these agents are, um, well, traditionally they were international agents, but due to COVID from May last year, the program was extended to include domestic frontline travel agents, now, if you're a commissionable tourism operator, you can engage with agents through this program. Um, the program is designed to upskill and train agents to become Aussie specialists so that they can use the logo that you see on the screen, um, which tells um, part of the story to their consumers. So imagine they're an international agent or even a domestic agent now. Um, you see that on their agency window. You're booking a big Australian journey. You're comfortable to go in there knowing that they are an accredited Aussie specialist. So there's a couple of elements to this. First of all, there's the travel club. So as an Aussie specialist, um, they are entitled to join the travel club and that's a discounted travel program. Um, you have to be a fully qualified Aussie specialist agent to use it during any personal trips to Australia. So as a supplier, you submit an industry rate or an offer or some kind of value add. You upload an image um, and you do that on the Tourism Australia and there's a travel club um, URL that we can provide you to do that. So it might be 10% off, it might be 15% off, but it really encourages these Aussie specialists to get out and see your product or experience, which is hugely beneficial to you because if they're out there experiencing your product or service, they're obviously able to sell it a lot better when they get back to, um, to their agency. Now, through this program, you can also have product training or upload product training videos. Now, there's been a huge increase in interest of frontline sellers for short um, and sharp sort of on-demand training videos. So this is your opportunity to submit a training video of up to five minutes um, for this Aussie Specialist website. So I would think of it as the equivalent of sitting face-to-face -face with an agent at a trade event or even if an agent was on a virtual tour of your product, for example. So you're, again, your training video shouldn't be any longer than five minutes. So short, sharp and interesting. You don't need to use that entire time, but maximum is five minutes. Um, you can deliver the information many different ways. So you could do a virtual tour of your product with a narration or a live guide. Um, you could record a webinar that contains presentations and images. Um, you could do a combination of both. So have a bit of a virtual tour plus a bit of a um, training sort of webinar. 
Um, the, you could have a consumer style advertising. They're generally not suitable because it's a short ad, but you can narrate over tourism style, I mean, consumer style advertising. Um, and, you know, if you've got existing footage as part of your training. So when you're doing this training video, don't assume that viewers know where you are geographically. So use maps, um, use other information or indicators that will tell them where you are geographically and visuals. Explain the benefit that your product gives to people, why they're going to love your experience, what makes it unique from other experiences. Um, think about what are the key parts that you think are must in terms of things to know for these agents. Um, remember that the agents can go onto your website at any time and look at specific details. So you don't have to go into too much depth about these specifics. Um, but just that key information to draw them in to want to know more. Um, use plain language that everyone understands because the, these um, videos will be accessed by both domestic agents but also international agents. Now, the key thing to keep in mind is international agents, particularly agencies that solely focus on selling Australia as a destination, are using this downtime to really upskill themselves to develop um, knowledge on new products. So it's a really key time, even though borders are closed, these agents are really focused on getting ready for when those borders are open. So this kind of thing is hugely beneficial to you. Um, have fun with it. It's your business. Be proud of it uh, in terms of, you know, how you uh, deliver these videos, but make sure that it, um, it definitely does entice these agents to want to sell your product. So that's Tourism Australia. Then we've got Tourism WA. So Tourism WA are a state government agency which I'm sure you're well aware of. They promote WA as this extraordinary holiday destination. They focus on marketing Western Australia, but also developing, attracting and promoting major sporting events, cultural and business events. They also work to develop significant tourism infrastructure and other projects like that that really enhance um, tourism in the state. The key role of your STO is to support the development and marketing of sustainable tourism destinations and experiences within the state to increase that awareness and ultimately attract visitors. So what they can do for you is obviously keep you informed of marketing activities and when and where you can be involved with them. They'll um, keep you informed of any industry news and updates. And uh, now they've got a series of um, emails that they get out that are really, uh, really beneficial. There's key information in those newsletters. newsletters. Um, you can also have your business showcased through their website, westaustralia.com. But as I mentioned, this is done through the Australian Tourism Data Warehouse, but also uh, you must be an accredited tourism business. There's no membership fee for ATDW. Um, so keep that in mind, but that accreditation is absolutely key. Okay, so how you can get involved. Um, in terms of uh, working with Tourism Western Australia, first of all, share your stories with them. So whether you're organising an event, launching a new tour product or have, you know, a, a new hotel or a new room or anything, Tourism WA will want to know about what you're doing. So their PR team is always on the lookout for new products or experiences that they can pitch to travel and lifestyle media outlets. Um, that will then be read and reviewed by your target audience, but they'll also share your latest news and product. Um, it could be events or destination in their monthly e-newsletter. Um, they've got This Is WA that goes out to consumers. They've got a media kit as well. Um, and then, of course, in terms of sharing your stories with them that go out to trade, that's equally as important. Um, it's important that within tourism, we know what other tourism operators are doing. So that could be uh, another avenue for you. Obviously, similar to Tourism Australia, Tourism WA have extensive social media accounts. Absolutely follow these accounts to see what kind of things they're posting and what's getting traction with their followers. Um, they're active on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter and collectively they reach more than 6 million people on a monthly basis. So it's absolutely huge. They've also got a YouTube channel which they share videos on. Um, I put their handles up there uh, for Instagram, sorry, they're at Western Australia. Um, Facebook is at Extraordinary Western Australia. Twitter is at West Australia. Um, so absolutely engage and tag them in your post. Um, tagging at Western Australia, use the hashtags as well when you post your, your photos or videos, use Wander Out Yonder and This Is WA um, so that they can spot your post and then they'll highly likely reuse your content. 
use the at, the mention, um, and other relevant relevant accounts like your, um, and I'll, I'll speak more about this shortly. So use the at mention for Western Australia, but also for Australia Southwest or your region, um, just so that you're really uh, getting that reach. Also, I would highly recommend that you join the conversation. So I've got an example of this that I'll show you shortly, but the best way to get noticed is when they're posting and talking about destinations, locations, specific products or services, join that conversation. So if you see a post that's relevant to you, comment, like, share it. Um, if you set up, you know, ways uh, to follow your local RTOs as well as your, your STO, so Tourism WA and Australia Southwest, you can really easily see if a post is relevant and then joining that conversation. Obviously, you need to get listed online, and I've said it a couple of times through ATDW for WesternAustralia.com. You must be accredited. For anyone that's online at the moment that isn't accredited, I will also be speaking about that accreditation and how you can get involved in that. So keep that in mind. Um, participating in trade and media for meals is great. So a familiar or a familiarization brings key trade or travel distributors. Um, and media from around Australia um, and potentially the world to experience products that make WA an amazing holiday and business events destination. So Media for Meals showcase the state's destinations, products and experience, and they encourage media to report on those um, to inspire people to visit the state. For Trade for Meals, um, that's more about travel distributors, and that could include retail travel agents, wholesale agents, airlines or inbound tour operators. Um, and those familiars educate them about WA products and then provide destinational information. Um, they also work with Tourism Australia and then, of course, Australia Southwest. So you might have contact for a familiar through Tourism Australia, Australia Southwest or Tourism WA. Most likely it will come through Australia Southwest Tourism. Now, you can also access images and videos. So take advantage of their free image and video library that's uh, there to help you promote WA as an amazing holiday destination. So it's stock images, essentially. Um, there's thousands of different images and videos that showcases different destinations and experiences across the state. And they're always building on that um, database of, of content. Um, there's also logos and graphics and other branding tools that you might use as well in your um, advertising or in your marketing. So it really helps provide people like yourselves within the industry, as well as media, um, a range of visuals that you can use to promote WA. Now, in terms of content, I would always recommend that you're getting your own stock um, or um, collection of images, your own database of images and videos. But there might be some key shots that you know exist or a, you know, a destinational, not product specific that you can add to your mix of marketing material. So to access the library, you do have to register. Generally, the registration process takes a couple of days. Um, so have a look at that and see what content's available. Like I said, they're continually updating it. Now, you can also distribute your product through Tourism WA or get advice on key distribution partners. So as part of your sales and marketing strategy, you obviously have to decide what sort of distribution partners you want to work with. And that'll depend on the needs of your business, of course, and what your product or service is. But Tourism WA work with a number of trade distribution partners, and this would include retail agents, wholesale, online travel agents, even aviation partners who sell WA products and packages and Tourism WA then undertakes marketing campaigns with them. So to benefit from those campaigns and to distribute your product further, you have to contact the product managers of these trade partners that are relevant to your business. Um, Tourism WA provide that key list of distribution partners. Um, ASW also have that. So Australia's Southwest Tourism can also provide that to you. Um, but keep in mind, that is uh, a huge benefit to really just navigate through that world of um, trade distribution because it can be quite complex. Now, as promised, I have some great examples. Um, now, have a look at these examples. So you've got the Bustleton Jetty that's uh, reached, well, it's in terms of likes, it's about 2,000 people, 199 comments and 300 shares. So that's huge reach. Um, the next one is um, the Cary... Uh, Valley Resort. Um, so again, you've got operators specifically mentioned here. Um, you've got a, a number of likes, comments and shares. And then on that last one that you see on the right hand side, I've highlighted that engagement by bailing up Fruit Winery here. So Western Australia has done a post 
Um, they have tagged Bailing Up Fruit Winery in it. There's a lot of comments. So there's 318 comments. Um, and then at some point, Bailing Up Fruit Winery have gone on and made comment and joined in that conversation. Very clever because everybody that's made comment on that post will now see Bailing Up's um, comments and can engage at a greater level with that particular operator. So when we talk about being part of the conversation, this is a really good example of how you can actually join conversation uh, with Tourism WA, even Tourism Australia, and of course, Australia's Southwest Tourism. Okay, now Australia's Southwest Tourism. So these are your regional tourism organization, but there are five, so keep that in mind. Um, and I will tell you what the others are shortly. So Australia Southwest or ASW are the peak tourism body for the Southwest region of WA. Now their region stretches from Bunbury Geograph to the Great Southern and then includes the regions of Margaret River and Southern Forests and Valleys. So their key role is to stimulate visitation to the Southwest region and to support their members, of course, like yourselves. So they're a not-for-profit organization. They're funded by a combination of your membership fees um, plus support from Tourism WA and also support from local government. Members actually make up the board of Australia Southwest and therefore you guys have a really active role in setting the strategy for the marketing of the region. Um, so make sure that you are engaged with them as much as possible. Um, they engage consumers culturally and emotionally through these domestic and international marketing strategies um, and support your tourism industry in the Southwest through industry engagement, through development, um, product development, plus training and education like you're experiencing now. Uh, in terms of what they can do for you, obviously keep you informed of marketing activities. You can work collaboratively with them to achieve greater marketing reach, and I'll expand on that. They also keep you informed of industry news and updates. So there is a membership fee um, to be a part of Australia Southwest. Uh, recently, a membership prospectus was sent out, so keep an eye on that. There's a variety of different levels depending on uh, your, your business um, and what suits your marketing needs at this stage. Now, in terms of how you can get involved with them. So as part of your membership, obviously you can showcase your business through the Australia Southwest website. Um, make sure that your business listing is up to date, of course. Um, you can participate in cooperative marketing opportunities that have been developed for members. Um, and you can really take advantage of subsidized advertising rates in their marketing campaigns as well. So keep that in mind. Not only will they do a marketing campaign, but the rate that you're paying for advertising, let's say if it was advertising in the West Australian, for example, the rate that you're paying is heavily subsidized by Australia Southwest. So you're not paying that full advertising rate um, that you would if you were to advertise on your own. Plus you're talking, um, you know, the region. So you're promoting the bigger picture. They produce an annual holiday planner, so you can absolutely promote your business in that. And again, there's a variety of levels and sizes of advertising space there. Um, you can list your business on their Southwest map and guide, which is heavily used by consumers um, once they're in the region. So a, huge, a very valuable marketing tool. Um, in terms of their social media channels, absolutely engage with ASW, like we've spoken about uh, with um Tourism Australia and Tourism Western Australia uh, for your chance to be featured in their post. And again, I'll show you some examples shortly. Um, they've got Instagram, they've got Facebook, they've even got LinkedIn. So have a look. They've got 124,000 people on their Instagram page, 58,000 on their Facebook. Um, and LinkedIn is a business to business sort of platform that they're developing. But I would highly encourage you to engage on all uh, levels. Now, I've put their tags there. Instagram tag is at Australia's underscore Southwest. Use the hashtag Australia Southwest. Facebook is at Australia Southwest. And then LinkedIn, you can just do a search to find their LinkedIn page. But again, being featured offers huge benefits uh, to your business. Keep in mind, Tourism Australia and Tourism Western Australia are also following and watching Australia's Southwest page. So they might post something on there that then gets um, attention not only by the 58,000 or 124,000 Instagram followers, but also by these state and regional and uh, state and national tourism organisations. Um, so, and like I said, I'll show you some examples shortly. In terms of interesting information, uh, they have got an extensive email database of 12,000 subscribers, and that's made up of consumer, trade, media, and industry. 
So if you have any interesting information or media releases, absolutely send them to Australia Southwest for the chance for your content to be featured in those that email marketing that they do. Um, don't think that any information is too big or too small. I think anything that's going on that we want to hear about, if not for their own development and industry um, knowledge, but definitely for um, communicating out to their databases. Now, ASW host and coordinate educational familiarizations for visiting domestic and international travel trade. Um, they support visiting journalists and media through hosting and also coordinating for meals for media. So there could be some great opportunities for you to be involved in this as well. Now, I mentioned Tourism Australia will plan media um, and trade for meals. Tourism WA will, but in most cases, they will go to ASW, to Australia Southwest, to engage them to um, provide itineraries, products and experiences on a ground level. So keep that in mind. Now, it's really important and you think about all the things that ASW are doing in terms of marketing and promoting the destination, they absolutely need to know you and you really need to know their team. So you're encouraged to meet the ASW marketing team to discuss perhaps business opportunities, stay inv informed of industry growth and other opportunities, but make sure that they, um, they really know your product and know about you. It's those kind of products and, and they obviously share the love uh, equally across all members. Um, but it's so important that they're abreast of any updates, changes, anything new or exciting that's going on and just have that personal relationship with them. So if you do need anything, you can give them a call and say, hey, Malcolm or, who, or Katrin, whoever it might be that, uh, that you're speaking to, you can really just have that um, close relationship with them. And that really helps you maximise your membership. Also, uh, to further sort of build relationships within the industry, keep an eye on networking opportunities that they offer. Now, those opportunities will allow you to connect with other members, um, potentially even build relationships with those members that will result in you cross-promoting and um, packaging your product, but also build your relationship with them as a team. So lots of ways to get involved there and really maximise your membership. Now, as promised, some examples of ASWs. Um, now, this is Facebook in this instance, but have a look here. You've got, I've got four examples here where they've tagged in uh, specific operators. Reach is absolutely fantastic in terms of likes, comments, and shares across all. Obviously, they'll always credit in the photographer as well, where that's relevant, where it's not a, a product. Um, but yeah, you can get huge reach uh, through their promotion. Follow their pages so that you get an idea of what sort of content they like to um, like to post and what works because they're going to post what works with their audience. Um, remember, it's 58,000 for Facebook and 124,000 for Instagram. And so their job is to continually keep that audience happy. Now, I did mention that there are other RTOs. So we've got five in, in Western Australia. There's Australia's Northwest Tourism, Australia's Coral Coast, Destination Perth, and Australia's Golden Outback, in addition to Australia's Southwest. So keep in mind, if you are working in multiple areas, you may want to consider multiple memberships as well. So each of these um, five regional tourism organisations are really actively working to promote their own uh, region. So do keep that in mind. Um, if you're working in multiple areas, certainly consider memberships with, um, with any relevant organisations. Now we're going to look at that uh, next year, which is visitor centres. Generally, visitor centres are not-for-profit not organisations. Um, they're located throughout the state um, and they provide information on the, the uh, destination. They might provide information on accommodation, attractions, activities and tours in that local area. Um, some of them will book your product. Uh, some of them will just provide recommendations. So what, in terms of what they can do for you, well, that you can work collaboratively with them to achieve greater marketing reach. They might have networking opportunities where you can meet other members of the, the visitor centre. They may take local bookings for your product or service. Now, normally there's a membership fee. Um, plus, you also would normally pay commissions if they do take bookings for your product or service. So some do, some don't. In some cases, if they do book your product, you can link 
um, reservation systems. So that would get, you know, really um, expand on the reach because they will have, um, in most cases, they'll have a website or pretty much in all cases, they'll have a website. So there will be people researching a destination prior to arriving. Um, so if you can get uh, coverage from their website, then you're obviously part of that information gathering process prior to people being in the destination. Then once they're in the destination, um, that's where the visitor servicing really comes into it. So that face-to-face -face contact when people walk into a visitor centre, want that local advice, which many people do. They want to speak to who they perceive to be a local to get that, what do you recommend I do? So it's really important that, um, that you're part of the, the local visitor centre for both of those reasons. Now, in terms of how you can get more involved with them, well, first of all, obviously go in and see them, get to know the team, particularly the frontline staff who are making recommendations to visitors that are in the region. You can give them product updates so they know your product. Um, they might have um, the need or staff that require for meals um, to experience your product or service. Obviously, if, you, if you've experienced something, it's a lot easier for you to sell it. Um, so keep that in mind. Also, have a look at their membership prospectus uh, to determine what other cooperative marketing opportunities there might be. Now, I've worked with a range of visitor centres. Some go to the lengths of doing their own advertising um, and marketing campaigns. Some have in-store promotions. Some have um, display advertising you could do. You might have billboard advertising through the visitor centre. There's a range of different things that a visitor centre can offer, but it will vary from visitor centre to visitor centre. Some are just doing the visitor servicing where they're purely providing recommendations. Some um, are doing bookings. Some are doing really tactical marketing campaigns. So get to know the visitor centres that are relevant to you and think outside your local area. Think if someone was travelling, may they might, might they go into a visitor centre that's not in your specific area, but they might go to some nearby visitor centres before they get to your town, for example. Um, understand what they're, they're offering to consumers, so what servicing um, they're offering, and then discover how you can work with them. But hugely beneficial and generally generates a lot of bookings. From a commission perspective, you pay anywhere from 10 to 15%, depending on the structure of the visitor centre. Um, so it's, yeah, a fantastic commission level as well. Okay, then we've got um, ATEC. Now, ATEC is a not-for-profit organisation again. Um, ATEC is an acronym for the Australian Tourism Export Council, and they're the peak industry body that represents Australia's tourism export sector. Um, so as an organisation, their views are informed by a cross-section of the Australian tourism industry. Um, they represent more than a thousand members across Australia, and that includes large national and multinational companies, as well as small and medium sized businesses. So a lot of um, who are based in regional and remote parts of Australia um, in terms of what they can do for you. Um, they give you access to business to business workshops and they are uh, they are responsible for lobbying for export um, export related uh, situations as part of the tourism industry. So they're basically your national tourism voice for export tourism or international tourism. Um, they offer educational opportunities through their export ready workshops and they have a really extensive industry database. So there is a membership fee to be a part of this. If you're working in the international market, I would highly recommend it. Um, in terms of how you can get involved, obviously they have B2B events um, such as Meeting Place. Now that's uh, generally an annual event, but they have smaller events as well. Sometimes they do things like road shows as well. Um, they do export ready workshops so that you can make sure that your business is actually ready to work with the international market. And as I mentioned, they communicate issues that require lobbying, or they lobby, so you can communicate any issues to them that perhaps require lobbying. Um, so a few ways to work with ATEC. Just keep in mind that they're predominantly an export, well, they're the export council, so they are focused on export tourism. Now, I'm not going to go into uh, all of these specialist organisations, but keep in mind there are a huge range of other specialist organisations that may or may not be relevant to your business. So there's anything from Business Events Perth, which do, although their name has Perth, they do obviously send people out to the regions as well. Um, there's WATOC, the WA um, Indigenous Tourism Operators Council, there's the Australian Hotels Association, Caravan Industry Association, 
um, marine tourism, WA Events Industry Association, even Taxi Council, Youth Hostels Australia, Wine of WA, and so much more. So keep that in mind. Now, if you are, um, I'll do the only one I'm going to expand on is weight off. So if you are an Indigenous tourism business, this is a key um, industry body for you. They represent Indigenous tourism in WA and provide advice and information at all to all relevant state government agencies, as well as the tourism industry. They are really active in lobbying for support for individual operators. There's a lot of networking that they do. They market um, Western Australia from an Indigenous tourism perspective as well. There is a membership fee, but they're a fantastic organisation, as are all of the other organisations, some of which will be relevant to your business and others won't. So do keep in mind that there are a range just as we've done with the organisations we've discussed today, make sure you truly understand what they can offer you and then really maximise um, maximize the benefit there. Okay, now in terms of um, another key body that you should absolutely be a part of, the Tourism Council of WA, TCWA, you may have come across them, but um, they're, they're a key organisation for WA and very active in the industry. So they're a not-for-profit organisation again, they lobby government on issues that have been identified by either individual tour operators or by the industry as a whole, um, and they really encourage state policies that facilitate travel and the creation of business opportunities. They also administer the, the um, accreditation, the Quality Tourism Framework or the Australian Tourism Accreditation Program. So in terms of what they can do for you, obviously they administer ATAP. Um, they can help you achieve better business practices through that accreditation. Um, they lobby government on key issues. So you've got your op the opportunity to have your voice heard. They provide very interesting, very relevant and regular industry updates. So you get an email newsletter out regularly as soon as anything happens. Now, in particular with COVID, they were extremely um, beneficial to the industry. They really actively lobbied for financial support um, and also other uh, support around COVID restrictions and that kind of thing. So um, they provide that information through those industry updates as well to keep you abreast of what's going on and what might impact your business. Um, they offer networking opportunities. Um, the biggest one is the Christmas tipple that happens at the end of the year. So that's one not to miss, but also other um, different members nights and um, ways that you can engage with um, the industry. Sometimes they'll be in the region, sometimes they'll be in Perth with their networking opportunities, but also their training and development. So they do a lot of training, particularly in the region. So keep an eye out for that and those professional development opportunities. Now there is an additional benefit, which is access to Review Pro, which is an online review platform that sort of um, collates all of your reviews. So it gives you one login, one central area um, to assess your um, online reviews. There is a membership fee. Um, there's a, uh, so keep that in mind, and that will vary depending on the size and scope of your business. Um, there's a number of ways to get involved um, with the Tourism Council of WA, and they obviously include the networking and the training development opportunities I've mentioned. But the two key things, um, if you do have any issues that require lobbying, obviously that's another key way to get involved with them. But the, the main two are accreditation and tourism awards. So I'm going to go into more detail on those. Now, there's a lot of different tourism accreditation programs, um, some of which are administered through Tourism Council, others aren't, but um, tourism accreditation essentially provides consumers and also other industry members with an assurance that a tourism operator is committed to a quality business practices and has reached a level of professionalism. So the ATAP, the Quality Tourism Framework, or the Australian Tourism Accreditation Program, gives you a... a a logo that you can see on the screen that tells us a story to consumers and it really just is a symbol that your business is committed to high quality systems procedures and standards now there are other accreditation programs um, now there is uh, obviously the atap plus the star ratings are both administered by tourism council there's eco tourism certification there's the caravan industry australia national accreditation program there's events industry there's the museum industry so you have to really pick and choose what accreditation is relevant for you. But the overarching tourism accreditation um, is ATAP, um, which you can see as per the logo. So that is so important. It's important to promote this national minimum standard of operations and give opportunities, uh, give consumers sorry, the opportunity to make that informed choice 
about the quality of a tourism product through that symbol. So um, in terms of this, um, this quality tourism framework, basically there's a single, um, it's very user-friendly tool that helps you to develop and to, um, to really go through this accreditation program. Now it's a national business development program. Um, so it's not, the WA is um, administered through Tourism Council, but keep in mind it is national uh, and basically assists in your professional management and systems that make sure that you're a reliable, consistent um, business and that your operations are solid. So basically you can get support through Tourism Council for going through the accreditation process. As I mentioned, once you are accredited, you then can be listed on the westernaustralia.com website. If you're not accredited, you can't. So that's a major um, benefit in becoming accredited, but it's really just this overall business quality tourism business. Other accreditations have other benefits. Ecotourism um, certification, again, it sends a message to uh, consumers if that's relevant to your business and it's what your consumers are looking for, I would absolutely consider that as well. But accreditation programs are um, hugely important. Just pick what's right for you. With the accreditation program, like I said, Tourism Council of WA do offer a lot of support. Um, they do make sure that they walk you through the process. They'll help you with, um, with setting up your systems so that you can become accredited. So that's sort of the minimum benchmark for a quality tourism business. Then once you've achieved that, there's the Tourism Awards Program. So the Tourism Awards Program is basically the difference between a quality tourism business and an amazing tourism business. So you should, at the bare minimum, be achieving accreditation and be a quality tourism business, but really you should be um, achieving this excellence um, through and obviously um, getting recognition of that through the Tourism Program, a Tourism Awards Program. So the WA Tourism Awards Program, again, that is administered through Tourism Council of WA, it recognises and rewards excellence in the WA tourism um, industry. If you are a winner at a state level, you then go on to the Australian Tourism Awards and compete. So one winner, one winner of each uh, category um, per state goes to compete. So you'll compete um, with other, other winners of that same category. Um, in terms of the process, it's a submission-based process, and that really aims to publicly recognise businesses that are committed to excellence in the delivery of their product or service, but also who's made a significant contribution to the WA tourism industry. So keep in mind, all of these organisations that we're talking about you working with, if you are really active in all of these organisations, it means you're getting a really strong message out to consumers. You'll then have a lot to talk about in terms of your award submission. Now, in terms of why you should enter the Tourism Awards, I think it's a hugely valuable tool, tool um, to be a bit of an annual business checkup. So you, um, as you're writing this submission, now it's a 12,000 word submission, so they are quite extensive, but it allows you to really look at what you've achieved over the previous year and what your goals might be for the future year. So suitable for both established businesses and new or developing businesses. Um, develop your business and your structure and assist with planning in the future through this submission-based um, process. It's fantastic for building staff morale, particularly staff that have worked really hard, truly believe that they've got an amazing tourism product, and then to be recognised at that level sort of, you know, really gives them that boost. Um, the submission itself can be, be become a bit of a, an induction for new staff of your business. It really covers all areas of your operation, um, so keep that in mind. If you win, you get some fantastic media coverage. Even as a finalist, you get great media coverage. You receive not only that media attention um, as the, the winner's list is distributed to all uh, media, uh, state and at a national level following the announcement of the winners, uh, but also you will have logos that you're able to use. So both finalists and medalists get electronic logos that identify the status um, of you know, either being a finalist or a winner in the WA Tourism Awards. You can use that on all your marketing and promotional material to really show your consumers and other industry um, that, you, that your level of professionalism and your quality tourism experience. So the industry recognition um, is great for networking. It's also great for, for building industry relationships. At obviously, um, consumer the consumer benefits are huge as well. Um, 
As I mentioned, state winners in most categories will go on to compete at a national level. It's normally based on each financial year. So nominations will generally open up in March of the year. Now, submissions will be due around July or August, I think. And you'll be talking about 1st of July of one year to 30th of June of the next. So if you're actively involved in all those organisations, you've achieved accreditation and now you're achieving business excellence and the awards are the perfect thing for you. So it's kind of like the peak or the pinnacle is to get to the awards. Um, if you then win at a state level, you've got these marketing tools to use, you get media coverage, you go on to compete nationally, hopefully win nationally and have even more media coverage, exposure, logos to use. So yeah, um, keep that in mind. It's a fantastic thing uh, to enter and to really get you involved in the tourism industry. All right, so that wraps up the session on levering, leveraging tourism organisations. So no matter what level of involvement you currently have, I hope there's something that you can take from that session. Um, if you want any more information, please feel free to either hop on the Q&A uh, or chat functionality now, and I will um, stay on for a few minutes to answer those questions. But do keep in mind that Australia's Southwest Tourism are there to support you. Their team have an absolute wealth of knowledge and information that you can draw on. If there's anything that we've gone through today that you want um, further information on, Australia's Southwest Tourism will be there um, to, to provide that information. Um, Malcolm has put some information in the chat bar, so have a look at that. Um, I really appreciate your time. I hope that we get to chat again soon. If you want to, you can always book a one-on-one -on -one appointment with me. The first appointment is completely free for an hour if you want to go through anything. Um, obviously, I'm presenting today on behalf of both the ASPAS program, which is a federal government program, but um, solely due to Australia's Southwest Tourism. We've partnered with them to give you this wonderful opportunity as a member. So Thank you again. If you've got any questions, hop on and ask them and hopefully I see you again soon.